Hi, Max Recapped here. Today I'm going to explain the movie 4x4, released in the year 2019. The movie begins with a man named Chiro, walking around a neighborhood in Buenos Aires. Chiro is a thug, and when he notices a car of his interest, he breaks into it. He gets into the car and steals its stereo. In the overhead compartment, Chiro finds a pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses and pockets them. He still isn't satisfied violating the car, and he forcefully clenches his butt to squeeze out a fart. He finally feels that his work is done, and he proceeds to leave, but lo and behold, the door doesn't open. He tries the other three doors, but none of them open. Left with no choice, he is forced to move over to the back seat, where he attempts to get the car's trunk to open. When he fails to do so, he finally begins to panic and he desperately tries to break the car's window, but without success. However, the seasoned thug refuses to give up and he dismantles the inner part of the car's door. He then squeezes his hand inside the door and tries to open it, but only to hurt himself badly. He begins bleeding, but the car door doesn't open. After all fails, Chiro pulls out his gun and shoots at the front window, but the bullets bounce off and pierce into his thighs. Chiro screams in extreme pain. Profusely bleeding, Chiro takes off his shirt and wraps it around the wound. So far, Chiro was avoiding being seen, but after having shot himself in the foot, he tries to get the attention of someone on the outside to help him get out of the car, even if it meant he would go to jail. Luckily, a woman appears outside the car and begins to fix her makeup using the car window. Chiro tries to ask her for help, but it appears that the woman outside the car can't see Chiro inside. He yells at her, but the woman leaves without flinching. Chiro tries to call his wife, but before the call could go through, the phone's battery dies. Several hours pass by and Chiro falls asleep. Chiro wakes up the next day extremely thirsty. He has run out of water and he is forced to lick the fog from the window out of desperation. Later, he takes out the car's stereo from his bag and puts it back to listen to the radio. The radio plays his favorite song and he gets lost in the music, forgetting about his troubles, even if for a brief moment. Although the song is a raunchy number, about having intercourse in the car, it coincidentally describes Chiro's situation. It talks about foggy windows, reclined seats, and doing it all night. For some reason, the song gives him the motivation to attempt opening the door again, and he gets at it. As he repeatedly hits the door with a tool, a phone starts to ring. It is the car's stereo. Chiro answers the call, and a man speaks from the other end. The man introduces himself as Dr. Enrique Ferrari, and welcomes Chiro in the car. Enrique continues that he is the owner of the SUV, and he has been robbed 28 times in his life. He adds that Chiro is the 29th thief that has tried to steal from him. The revelation enrages Chiro and he demands to be freed, but Enrique tells him to shut up and listen. Enrique then continues that he calls his car 4x4, which has an alarm that's connected to his phone, using which Enrico can lock all the doors to the car. It is bulletproof. It can't be moved from inside because of active suspension. It is also soundproof. Moreover, the windows, including the front windshield, are all polarized. The only thing that's not bulletproof is the gas tank, which can hold 120 liters of fuel, and it is full at the moment. Enrique warns him that the full gas tank is a potential bomb, and in case he tries something funny, the car could explode along with him. As Chiro hears in disbelief, Enrique continues that he is a widower who was born in Kielmes 60 years ago. He had a normal childhood for a middle-class child at the time. The doors to his houses were never locked. Enrique says that the current life is in such a bad state right now that he misses the life he had when he was a child. He asks Chiro what he would do if he caught his son stealing. However, Chiro has had enough and he threatens to report Enrique to the police. Chiro orders Enrique to release him so he can kill him and all of his family. However, before Chiro could finish, the phone hangs up. Afterwards, Enrique turns on the air conditioner and takes it to the lowest temperature to torture the thief. Chiro tries to turn off the AC, but without success. Left with no choice, Chiro takes off his shirt from his wound and wears it. To stop his foot from bleeding, he tears a part of his jeans and wraps it around his wound. 
After torturing the thief for a good hour, Enrique again calls him and again asks him what he would do if he caught his son stealing. He tells him that he will give him water if he answers the question correctly. Chiro answers the question, but it doesn't satisfy Enrique. Chiro pleads with him to stop, saying that he has learned his lesson, but Enrique could care less and he again tells Chiro about an incident. He reveals that last December, two men broke into his daughter's home when she was parking her car. Enrique reveals that he trained his daughter for situations like this. She always avoids making eye contact and always has money prepared to hand out. However, the training wasn't enough and the robbers put a gun to Enrique's grandsons for three hours. However, Chiro is not interested in Enrique's stories and questions him what kind of a doctor deprives a wounded person of water. Enrique commends him for the question and asks him to guess the kind of doctor he is before hanging up. As Chiro brainstorms, a police car arrives and stops in front of his SUV. Chiro is again filled with hope and he tries to get the attention of the policeman, but the policeman gives the SUV a ticket instead and leaves. Several hours later, Enrique calls again and asks Chiro his full name and his ID number in exchange for water. After Chiro complies, Enrique guides him to the water in the washer hose in the back. The water is light blue in color, but a dehydrated Chiro could care less and gulps down the water, breathing a sigh of relief. However, Chiro is still hungry and without food, so he is almost forced to eat one insect that has somehow made its way into the car. Later, Chiro checks his wound and learns that it's turning yellow and he also has a fever. Enrique decides to give him a break and he turns on the AC for Chiro so he could cool down and reveals that he is also sick. Enrique is dying of cancer and the doctors have told him that he has got a year to live. As Enrique continues to blabber, Chiro takes off his clothes and passes out. Chiro's body has also turned yellow. Later, Chiro goes through the car manual looking for a way to escape, but only to eat its page in sheer desperation and frustration. Chiro is really at his lowest point, and he pisses in a container and drinks his own piss to quench his thirst. Suddenly, things look great for Chiro when a burglar tries to break into the SUV, giving him hope. However, the thief is spotted by passerby and they beat him up and hand him to the police. Soon the night falls and dehydration and hunger turns him into a philosopher. He notes how a small percentage of people have so many things that need to be distributed so everyone can enjoy them. He further adds that the world is full of poor people with laws made by rich people for rich people. Chiro claims that he will not obey them even if they gun him down. He reveals that's why he became a thief just like his father and grandfather. The next day, Enrique calls him again and reads him the newspaper. Enrique says that he is in a good mood, so he guides him to a hidden chocolate bar behind the brakes. After spending all day resting and observing the people in the neighborhood, Chiro again repeatedly strikes on one of the doors he managed to strip down to its metal part from the inside. Eventually, he manages to create a small hole in the door that opens outside. He screams through the tiny hole to attract someone's attention, but without success. Enrique later calls and reveals that he has contacted Chiro's family. Hearing his family's name, Chiro tears up and warns Enrique against harming them. He then tearfully asks what he did to him to deserve this. However, Enrique doesn't stop and he pulls out Chiro's criminal record and reveals that Chiro has killed a person before. A tearful Chiro denies having killed anyone. Enrique has receipts and he reveals that Chiro broke into the home of the Salerno brothers in Baracas to rob them, but they tried to fight back and Chiro shot them with his gun. Enrique also brings up an old bus driver that Chiro badly beat up. However, Chiro still refuses to take responsibility and blames the driver for not letting him rob the passengers. He says that he made mistakes and he has already paid for them. Later, Chiro charges his phone with solar power and calls his wife, but the call goes straight to voicemail. In the voicemail, he confesses to his wife everything and apologizes for messing up again. After crying his eyes out, Chiro plays with the car's start button and manages to turn it on. Apparently, it can only be started without a key after pressing it a certain number of times. He puts on the seatbelt and places the gear in reverse mode. However, the gear gets stuck in reverse mode and he is forced to drive in reverse. He speeds the car and crashes it to a pole to attract people's attention. 
Fortunately, the airbag activates on time and he doesn't sustain any injury. Chiro is finally able to kick down the weakened rear window and escape. He is in extreme pain, but he manages to drag himself to a nearby gas station eatery, where he helps himself to some food. As he relishes every bite of his food, the eatery's manager orders him to pay for the food and leave immediately. This enrages Chiro, and he shoots the manager. Chiro then wakes from his sleep and he realizes that he was dreaming and he is still stuck in the car. Enrique calls again and Chiro threatens to commit suicide, but it fails to phase the former. Fed up, Chiro puts his gun to his mouth and pulls the trigger, but the gun gets stuck. Enrique laughs at the thief's misery and asks him to look in front of the car, finally revealing himself. Enrique gets in the car with him. Chiro is extremely fatigued and he doesn't even have the energy to escape. Enrique tends to Chiro's wound and afterwards gets distracted in a work call as Chiro seemingly falls asleep. Just then, Chiro unsuccessfully tries to shoot the deranged doctor and jumps out of the car. He is finally out and he fires a shot in the air to call for help. However, Enrique again gets to him and tries to drag him back to the SUV. A policewoman spots the two and orders the doctor to drop the gun. Two hours pass by. People, media, and police have surrounded the area, but Enrique refuses to let Chiro go, saying he is the victim of the thief. After all fails, the police call retired negotiator Julio Amadio, who asks the doctor what he wants. Enrique then lists a range of problems that he faces every day that the government doesn't do anything about because at least no one got hurt. Enrique says while walking to his office, he has to avoid 2,000 dog poops on the street because the dog owners don't clean after their pets when no one's looking. The public resonate with Enrique and they cheer for him. Julio refuses to give up and continues to talk to Enrique and eventually convinces him to let Chiro go. The police arrest Chiro and Julio asks Enrique to surrender, but he gets in his car after placing a timer on top of his car. Julio suspects that it's a bomb and orders everyone to back up. The SUV explodes, killing Enrique, but not before igniting a fire in every commoner's heart. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.